Hello everyone and welcome to today's lesson. It's Phil here from One to One IELTS and in today's lesson we're going to look at how to write conclusions for an opinion essay. I'm going to show you a structure that you can use in your essays. This will apply to all opinion essays and if you follow this structure it means that your conclusions will always be grammatically correct. The purpose, and it's always important to understand the purpose of anything you're writing, it's like, why do we write a conclusion? Well, it's to summarize the ideas that you have stated in your main body paragraphs. And for an opinion essay, it's really important that we restate our opinion as well. Remember, because it's an IELTS essay, so you're gonna find the conclusions are taught differently in different places. So if you're at university, People might tell you, I want you to write future predictions, uh, provide some solutions. Again, your school might ask you to paraphrase a question statement again in the conclusion. This is a 250 word IELTS essay. You don't need to do that. Doing it does not get you any marks, but it does waste your time. What we want to focus on is just summarizing the main ideas and repeating our opinion. That's it. And we also don't need to summarize our explanations or any results. So just focus on what were your main ideas that you had in the topic sentences of your main body paragraphs. If ever in doubt, your conclusion is basically just a paraphrase of your outline statement that you had in your introduction. So these two are going to be very similar. Today's question, this is the question we've been looking at the last couple of weeks, is some people think that there should be a complete ban on all forms of advertising to what extent do you agree or disagree? We have here an opinion essay. What is special about this opinion question? There is one important word in this question. Nabila says extent, exactly. In your introduction, we want to mention this, and also in our conclusion, it's also important that we address the part that mentions extent. How do we address this part of the question? You know, we always want to have a strong opinion. So simply, I strongly agree, or I strongly disagree. I totally agree, I totally disagree. I completely agree, or I completely disagree. So some form of strong adverb to indicate your extent. We need to address this because it is part of the question. So to make sure that we get as many marks as possible for task response, this is a key part of the question that needs to be repeated in our conclusion. We have two topic sentences which contain our main ideas. The topic sentence one mentions that adverts educate people about new products. We are totally disagreeing that they should be a ban, by the way. But this is a main idea one. And the second reason I do not agree is that many people will become unemployed. So this was our second idea. These are the two ideas we're going to be restating. What would be the most logical order for us to address these? Does it matter which order we talk about them? Mary says it matters. Yes, I agree, Mary. Uh, Nabila says the same as the intro and the main body paragraph. Good. So if topic sentence one is they educate people about new products, and uh, topic sentence two says many people will become unemployed, in our conclusion, that is the order that we want to summarize our ideas because it's a logical coherent way of addressing this. Are we going to mention our opinion first or after the, the ideas? First, as we can see in the structures that I have created for you here. So I've got a couple of different structures that we can use here. It's an opinion essay. There's always going to be two reasons for your opinion. The two reasons why I totally disagree or completely, whichever adverb you want to use. And then we can use with, plus a noun phrase, or that, plus a clause. So let's just look at this first part to start with. If I use the structure with, as I said, I want a noun phrase, we're basically showing what we are disagreeing with. So how can we look at the question? So some people think that there should be a complete ban on all forms of advertising and indicate what we're disagreeing with with a noun phrase. Can anyone give me a suggestion of language for this? And you'll notice in a lot of my lessons, I talk about noun phrases and clauses. If you're not sure what these are, 
type them into Google. These are really important parts of a sentence structure. Now, noun phrases often start with what type of word? A gerund, exactly. We start often start noun phrases with a gerund. So the two reasons why I totally disagree with banning all forms of advertisements, we can see this is a noun phrase. So this actually goes in here. So this is our first part of the structure. Now, the alternative structure I mentioned is we could use that. So I disagree that. Now, after this expression, we use a clause. So now we can use my Treya's clause here. Two reasons why I totally disagree that advertisements should not be completely banned. And now be very careful here. Our question says some people think that there should be a complete ban. So we're not disagreeing that there should not be. We're disagreeing that there should be. So you are saying there shouldn't be, but you're disagreeing with the idea that there should be. So the two reasons why I totally disagree with advert that advertisement should be completely banned. So this is the noun phrase. This is the clause. So that's the first part of our structure. And then we need to actually give our reasons. R, because we've got two reasons. So both of these are going to be followed with. And then when we summarize our ideas, because we want to give complete ideas, we use clauses. So using the stem that I have here, either one of these would be fine. You can use this noun phrase stem. You can use this clause stem. How would you summarize the two main ideas we have here? So if possible, try and vary the language a bit. Remember, we're going to have clause one and clause two. So to have a clause, we need subject, verb, and possible object. Subject, verb, possible object. So let's have a look at my trails first. So the two reasons why I totally disagree and first it should be completely banned. So what was the word that come, comes after this? So we want a verb after this. Because this is, at the moment, this is a one really big subject. So in English, we go subject, verb, object. So we can't have a conjunction straight after a subject. I would say, ah, oh, as we have from this structure here. Let's just break this down a little bit so we understand the grammar we have. At the moment, this is a really long subject. What is the main noun in the subject? Yeah, reasons. This is our main noun. Everything else around this is giving extra information. So the shows we're talking about specific reasons. Two is indicating the number. This phrase here is indicating what the reasons are about. But all of this noun phrase is based around reasons. So our verb has to connect and conjugate to this word reasons. And this is something you can just simply memorize. Two reasons why I totally, and then the disagree or agree is going to depend on the, the essay. That is going to be followed by a clause, and then R. So no because, for this structure we're using R. And then we're going to put clause one and clause two. So let's put this two back together. So don't use the because to try and connect this. We're using the verb R. And then if you follow the structure, you know your grammar is correct. They are. They educate consumers about new products in the market. Excellent. And a lot of people will be unemployed from the job. So what job? And here, we're showing a change. So we would say become, a lot of people will become unemployed from, so we've got lots of people. They have one job or many jobs, many jobs. So more than one person, more than one job. A lot of people will become unemployed from the jobs would belong to them. So we could maybe say from their jobs. A slightly more natural collocation here, rather than saying to become unemployed from a job is a little bit awkward. Can you think of one word which I could replace this? So Mary mentioned jobless. So yeah, we could say here they will become jobless, they will become unemployed, or they will, this is a very common expression they will lose their job. So this is a really natural collocation here. Clear idea. Losing jobs, is that the same as many people will become un unemployed? Yes. They educate consumers about new products. They educate people about new products. Yep, same meaning. So this is absolutely fine. We have restated 
our opinion. We have shown the extent, which is really important. And the two ideas that we've mentioned here are the same, have exactly the same meaning as the ideas that were in our topic sentences. So this would be a really, really good conclusion. There's just one thing we need to add. What do I put in at the start of all conclusions? We've got two options. Simply at the beginning of your conclusion, we have in conclusion or to conclude. In conclusion, to conclude. Either of these are absolutely fine. And then we follow the structure that I've given you here. And then Mary had a conclusion to look at. So let me go back to that. I'm glad I have one person using noun phrases and one person using clauses. That demonstrates both of our structures. So thank you guys. So I'm just going to put in here in conclusion. And this is also a mistake I see a lot of people make. I'm not really sure why. It's always in the conclusion. They write in conclusion and then they have a capital letter. So after this comma, unless you are writing a proper noun, there is no capital letter here. The two reasons why I completely agree with banning all kinds of adverbs. So exactly the same problem as the previous one. This is a noun phrase. I can't follow a noun phrase with because. So can you remember from the structure what word comes here? Are. Not are that, simply are. Follow the, that earlier structure and and you're always going to be correct. And then we're going to have clause one, and we're going to have clause two. So advertisements make people aware about their products, and a lot of individuals will become unemployed. Good. These were two ideas that were mentioned in our topic sentences. They're exactly the same meaning. They've come in the same order. Our opinion is clear, and the extent of our opinion is clear. So this is basically, as far as I'm concerned, a perfect conclusion. Don't need to do anything clever. We just remember this structure. So with, we've got this structure. We have noun phrase, our joining word. So then we have our two clauses. And remember, clauses, not noun phrases here. Should I put a comma here? And if not, why not? Mary says no, and Mary is correct. But I'm joining two independent clauses. Aha, we have two objects, exactly. So this is subject, verb, object one, object two. When you have a compound object, you don't put a comma before the and. Again, it's really minor, but if, uh, for people who are interested in punctuation, this is going to be the structure you come up with all the time for these opinion essays. If you follow the structure, you will be correct. And this is the structure that you need to learn to do these kinds of questions. The two reasons, it's always gonna be two reasons for an opinion essay, why I totally disagree or agree. Obviously this depends on the question. If you use with, it's plus a noun phrase. If you use that, it's plus a clause. R, and then you just do clause one and clause two, no comma before the and. Remember the structure. And as long as you understand how to write a noun phrase and how to write a clause, your grammar will always be correct for your conclusions of an opinion essay. I hope you found that useful. I hope this is a structure that you can apply in your real exam and in your essays when you're practicing. Good luck to you all in your studies and I'll see you all in the next video.